Hey there, welcome back to the Soul Rocker Podcast, and I am your host, Vanessa Delgado. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that I've never really talked about on any of my social media. If you happen to follow me, I've never really shared any of this. I, in fact, have really never shared this with many friends or just people in general. Latin community and spirituality. Um... Now, a huge chunk of the Latino community are Catholic-based, okay? In fact, that's what my family was when I was really young. Um, and modern spirituality has, been, has, has many misconceptions, just I think generally, but even within the culture, it's like intensified. And now in this episode, I want to share a little bit about my personal background experiences because it's a bit different than I would say normal. Now, obviously, like there's a sense of things that I recognize within our Latin community that just I feel like exist heavily, but I just hardly ever spoken about. I've had small instances where I've had friends, you know, growing up and they would come over and we would get into the topics um, because To an extent, I would talk about some of these things with certain friends that I felt like were curious about it or kind of were aware of it. Um, And then oftentimes, like, they would come over and, you know, my mom would often kind of, like, join in the conversation and then she would be kind of, like, the one driving it more so. I'd be kind of quiet because I just didn't really feel comfortable, nor did I really have the knowledge um, or history that, like, my mom did so I normally would just stay more quiet so a lot of or some of my friends could relate or they were just simply curious and not unless we brought up this topic like it literally I would have never known in fact like it was kind of like something that we never touched and then because it came over and somehow the conversation kind of came up it was like I like was learning something about my friends that like, hey, this actually exists within the community and I just did not know because no one talks about it. Like it has to be spoken in a in a very particular, you know, way and like there's like a time and a place for it, which it there is, but I just it just seems like it's like something that people don't want to talk about. So, essentially when up until maybe the age of 8, uh, my family and I think, I'm not entirely sure because I, I don't have the best memory as a, as a kid. Like, there's a lot of stuff that just is, is foggy for me. Now, my family was primarily driven by driven by my grandma. Uh, we were Catholic. And I actually was baptized with um, as a baby um, with the Catholic Church. And I actually went to a couple uh, paid schools that were Catholic based. Um, and I remember attempting to do my first communion, but then ended up not just because there's, there's more of that in a bit, but essentially I did not go through that. Um, and then I want to say about age eight, maybe 10, something along the lines, my grandma ended up shifting religions and to Pentecostal. And I remember, I don't, like, I don't even know. I think I want to say that my mom actually had discussed this with once with me, but it really didn't stick to me um, because I, I don't even know if they were entirely fully aware of why my grandma made these types of decisions, why she made the decision to shift churches. And there was a period of time, a shorter one, where she kind of was curious and tr- trying out and testing out different churches um, and then she came across a Pentecostal one, a specific like church, you know, with a group of people. And she, I guess she really resonated with them and she ended up joining in. And essentially we all joined in because she, she did. And my mom has always been the black sheep of the family. And as a kid, she always had strong, like abnormal questions that she often would ask. Not necessarily to the family um but she would ask whether it was like friends strangers or even like the own like the actual people from you know the church and she could never seem to get any answers and when 
my grandma joined the Pentecostal church. My mom ended up getting baptized. Actually, even I did uh, when I was maybe like 13. And I want to say maybe an uncle also got baptized and then another aunt of mine. I don't, or maybe it could have been two uncles. Either way, my mom, shortly after my grandma joined, uh, she tried to also go and fit in. But she always felt off. Like she still had a lot of the same questions. And I don't know if she necessarily also asked this religion and these people, uh, these questions that she had. Um, But it just always seemed like she had questions that she just could never get answered that were important to her. And oftentimes she was often judged for her for certain choices that she made. And I mean, she was like judged just for being a single mother and for having short hair because within the Pentecostal, everyone has long ass hair. And they kept trying to tell my mom like, oh, well, why don't you grow it? And you need to grow it out. Like they were practically telling her what to do. And my mom's like, well, I've never had long hair. And it just, that'd be like, just not me. And they wanted to know everything about her, just like everyone's business. And I'm not saying that like this is Pentecostal in general. I don't really know. This is just our experience from this specific Pentecostal community that she, my family was involved in. I can't speak for everyone else. This is just our experience. And now essentially my main experience ever since I was about 10, maybe sooner, my mom started to get into angel books and like books that talked about dreams and spirit guides psychics and mediums and I remember seeing her read a ton now in those days which was like 20 plus years ago books were really the only thing that you could get your hands on Um, even when the internet and such came along it just wasn't that easy or common to find like the things that you can easily find now that it's not just you go on google and type in a few words but like you know nowadays it's like podcasts also have very informative type of information on these topics or people who can share experiences and such but like YouTube and there's just so many different outlets and information out there now. Sylvia Brown was one of the main and first people that she was introduced to and probably read like every book and this lady has like 50 plus books like literally I counted it was like 51 or 52 something like that. And um, later on she also got into like John Edwards and I'm not really entirely sure everyone else that was kind of like common in those days, but she really got into it. Now, over time, I noticed that my mom sharing more about what she was reading and learning and how she found more clarity on the questions that she always has had, you know, with kind of getting into this side of things. And even these weird experiences like saying things to people and not realizing where they were coming from and the and the reactions from people as they... Like as, I, as if like they dead ass thought a ghost or how she would often predict things of which she just had no idea of how or why. And so she thought she was talking up, she, you know, she literally thought she was just talking out of her ass. And also I saw her getting curious with tarot cards and oracle cards. Um, I saw other like little practices, but she, I mean, she even got curious with like the Wicca. And I remember like, even though I didn't quite understand it, I remember actually supporting her and and I bought her like this huge Wicca book that I came across one time when I went to Barnes and Nobles with my dad. And he doesn't even know, but I totally like found the book and I was like, oh my God, like my mom was actually like, it's not that she was actually doing any of the practices within the Wicca, but it was something that I saw her getting just curious about and trying to learn what it was and essentially seeing if that was something that she resonated with or how does that, like, I I see a lot of myself in my mom. And so I remember when I went to this, like, I think it might've been Barnes and Nobles. Um, and I was, I was probably like 13, maybe 15. I don't know. And I went with my dad and I saw this book and it was huge. And I was like, oh my God, I think my mom would like this. This is exactly what she's like into right now. And I remember buying it for her and I lied to my dad because my dad was like, absolutely not anything that was had to do with my mom. It was like, no. So 
I just remember like lying to him and saying, oh, well, like I have a school project that I'm working on and I really need this book because this is like exactly the topic that I'm working on. And like, if I can do the research, this is going to be a great book. And if I can bring it in as a presentation, like I'll get extra credit points. Like I (laughs) was, I did a white lie, but it was like for a good cause, I think. Um, I... The the tarot cards and the oracle cards, um, I felt like she sort of tapped into, but it, I could tell like it wasn't really, like she wasn't vibing with it. She wasn't connecting with it. And so like it, I barely saw her kind of touching that and she just had bought a few. And, but I, 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 right away I knew I could tell that like she just wasn't into it. So she barely touched on that and just kind of put it away. Now, the part about the Latin community um, is the fact that even though my grandma was Catholic, like many Latinos are, she believed in witchcraft or, you know, brujería. And essentially, that's how a lot of the Latin community is. It's like they believe in the black magic, but they also obviously believe in like, you know, the Virgin or Jesus or uh, saints and um, God and which I'm just throwing it out there. Like I'm not judging. I'm just throwing out what I've noticed. And I remember growing up, I'm talking about like five years old. And my grandma actually almost practiced two main healing techniques herself of what I noticed. So she did one, which they call it empacho, which was like this stomach discomfort um, that sometimes people go through. And I, I don't really know. Because uh, I haven't heard of the, that type of healing practices since basically when I was really little. It kind of just all of a sudden like wasn't really a thing when I got older. But she would usually practice that on like the kids and like our the family kids. So like my, my cousins and then any family or any friends that she had, you know, I guess they were kind of down with that kind of thing and uh i remember her doing it you know here and there for other kids too um but i always tend to notice it was more of just kids and then she also did one what they what they call the susto when when someone experiences like a tense fear usually caused by like something that scared them or a dream um or like a close call accident uh and then uh, another thing which everyone practically knows about this is ojo so the evil eye that to me just like i remember seeing my grandma do that but i just felt so normal like i I never questioned like what is she doing and i don't honestly i don't even know how common that is across other latin you know communities and like if that was like a thing that like they noticed their grandma's doing maybe i I don't i don't really know i i haven't done research on that or really have heard um too many people i've i've heard that other people have done that but it's just i hardly have heard much about it now there is these two local women who practice different occult like uh, like quote unquote occult things um now locally now i know one of them is still out there the other one i'm not entirely sure i'm pretty sure she probably still is or if she's in town i don't know if she moved um but there was one who was like a like an aka bruja who started off one way but over time shifted into more like negative she started off like more of a, a positive situation like light like doing like a spell but like more positive ways i guess um and then but it just over time it's like the ego kind of took over she started to practice more of the darker aspect of witchcraft and jinking up her prices and just kind of turning to just very different essentially she would do spells like not evil i would say but just other like rituals usually people who wanted to who wanted love or to attract money or things out of that nature like maybe they had a um somebody that they were dating and they were like i want this person to commit or i want this person to like have a baby with me or whatever and so she would see both male and females go in there asking for um you know or even like asking for like i want my ex back or whatever so it was just little things like that it's not to the extent of i don't think that she did like 
what a lot of people maybe associate like a witch with is like oh let's do like one of those rag dolls and let me like stick a pin like it wasn't that kind like I think that's kind of like a misconception kind of like the uh, psychic mediums with like their crystal balls like that's not really a thing that's like a a fairy tale aspect to what this type of thing is she I like she used to be very intuitive and she even sometimes would like read tarot cards but over time it's like because she actually became a really really close family friend and because of this we've obviously had a connection with her and so we kind of noticed that her intuition had kind of lost its way and oftentimes we hear this type of thing where you lose your intuition because intuition is something that you everyone has but some people just have it a little bit you know much deeper or they, it works in different ways so these are like the the different um clairs that you might hear uh so somebody people might have their intuition kind of like connected with their clair uh, clair audience clair essence or whatever the, the the four or five clairs um it it's like anything you have to build that so it's it i always re- i always like reference muscle because in fitness because it's so like it's the easiest way to kind of like put into perspective for me and to maybe even explain to other people it's something that you have to work on and just because you've built it to an extent doesn't mean you just not continue to still practice it and still kind of like help maintain do things to help maintain it and also it's it's common that if you start to if you once kind of navigate like drove with like a sense of light and for you know more helping purposes rather than like the ego and wanting to charge more money and wanting to harm people that sometimes can kind of kill some of these you know quote unquote gifts that we have um because you're using it for for essentially negative and that's not what they're necessarily meant to do so um the second woman was actually a a curandera so she was like a she was a healer basically and she worked with a niño fidencio who was a saint just uh, and then just a quick context of who niño fidencio is is he was a mexican curandero he was an actual like living flesh man spiritual healer when he was alive and his story background was that of which he was a healer that with his with his hands and he used herbs and often people who couldn't see a doctor because either you know there was just not they didn't have the the money or it just sometimes you know if there was like a doctor that couldn't see them and they're like well i need to see somebody now or weren't getting the results that they were looking for they would go to him and so he was given the name Nino, which uh, essentially means like child, um, but like a boy child um, in English, um, because he was a virgin his whole life. Apparently, like one of the things that he did a lot when he was in his actual spiritual practice, um, he wore white a lot and he often took off his shoes and he would be like just in socks or like barefoot. And so now that's really associated with anybody that works with him and they also will essentially be asked to do the same and um so this lady had a a whole process that seemed really interesting to me um because i remember going along with my mom or my family members who sometimes would go and visit her to you know to get her services and i would just kind of be there observing and so and i was super young i mean i was probably like I don't even know, five, eight, you know, between that age. And she would wear, she would wear all the white. um, And she would remove her shoes. She usually would uh, put on some white socks during her Olympia. So she would always have on like this white, like often it'd be like either like a a white outfit or she would have like almost like a white. um, It looks like uh, one of those, you know, things that you sleep in like pajama like uh dresses and she would want her she would put on her socks so normally like you would see her taking off her little slippers and like slipping on some socks and 
people went to her for many, many things. Um, she would also sell like candles that weren't, that were blessed. And then she would add like the, the special oils of which she all got these things directly from Mexico. So she normally would like travel to Mexico, I, whether it was like once or twice a year or whatever it was, just to pick up these special items that were, I believe were from where he, uh, was from. And then, you know, kind of had their own, like they were, blessed in a certain way she would often sell the candles and even had some on display because she they people often came um and they could be a form to burn and pick up any messages that um that she could actually read um so you would burn the candle after setting an intention in prayer and let it burn without turning it off until it was complete and then people would return and the residue often that's left had messages and it was so crazy because in some of these ones that she would have on display just to show like people it would be like crazy clear pictures that were uh placed on like on on these things and you're just like how the heck did that candle burn in that way to leave like a clear picture of and it, it would be like a form of like a man it was like you know like a silhouette or like it'd be like an animal or it'd be like literally initials or some type of like i don't know it was it was bizarre usually um el niño would give these people that attended uh you know for the limpias they'd be like they would give these people like these recetas or like these prescriptions um of um medical herbs or directed to take a bath in a holy water or to drink a glass of water based on distinct but not not necessarily weird protocols well maybe to some but it wasn't like entirely weird it would just be like oh let's get some water and like leave it under the full moon or leave it under your bed and put like a knife over it and then drink it like the next day just take like a sip of water and again it was just depending on what the person went in for because it was anything from if they were, you know, not feeling well or they wanted to connect. In a sense, it was even like, I want to heal this situation with this person or it was it was very like positive, but like having, you know, a ritual behind it. I remember like I just found all of that super interesting, but at the same time, it was like so overwhelming to like wrap my head around it was like way too much for my little brain to like even try to make sense of it so it was just kind of like meh like whatever you know um it, it didn't scare me or anything like that it was just like it was odd but at the same time like it felt like there was a sense of like normalcy to that having going through that and seeing that this was you know being told to people it, it, it's just it's really weird and not now as an adult I can put everything together but you know for a long time I, di- I did it and so seeing how my mom struggled with her gift because she my mom essentially is a she has like she can connect to I guess she can see like a little bit of the future so like I don't know my mom and I have always been kind of like, ugh, we really hate these like, like terms that people use. Like, it's like, you know what? I just, I know how to connect because she always felt like even her, the way that she, so some people are like, oh, well, she's maybe like, she's probably like a psychic, but she, when she has done the research or has connected to like, or not, not necessarily connected, but like read about other psychics, for example, it was like, there was none that she could relate to that could be like, oh, this is exactly what how I am or how I, you know, go about, you know, connecting or how the, I relate to this. Like, it was just never something that she can hardly. Re- so it's just like, OK, am I or am I not? Like, what if I'm just kind of like weird? I think she's learned to accept it because there's just been way too many things that. Like I said, even as an, as a, a teen, like she would say things that she thought were just coming out of her ass. And people would literally look at her like they saw a ghost. And she was like, I had no idea because nobody would tell me like, uh, yeah, how did you know that? Like no one said anything. It was just kind of like they looked at her like she was a weirdo and like how the, you know, maybe she just found out because somebody else gossiped about whatever. And that's how she found out. But like, damn, how does she find out? Because like no one really knows that. 
but like i guess she found out by somebody who has a big mouth you know it was kind of that kind of vibe where people just assumed it was that the way that my mom receives information is, is just very distinct to what she normally has heard other people the way that she connects it's like i don't need x y and z in order to find this kind of information like I just or or access this information I just happen to know and seeing her struggle with trying to I guess for even for a long time to accept that she had these particular gifts but even also to know you know I think sometimes what also might have bothered her um and even like me just now it's just like I don't really like, we don't really like these terms of like being a medium and being a psychic and being this, like, it's just like, or being an empath. And like, it's just, cause it really boxes you in. And then you're like, well, am I? Because I don't relate to that as a, a, to a perfect T. And you're like, well, does that, that mean that I am an, imp-? you know, for example, she struggled with the, just these trying to communicate with her. Like I was afraid of all those things or to even feel like who am I to have this gift? And I feel like she even struggled with that. I'm not special, you know, and it drove me to specifically stay away because I too can be very... Now, I, again, I'm not saying that I am psychic or anything like that. I'm just... I personally always just say I'm very intuitive. And when I look at things from an astro, uh, uh, astrology as, aspect and looking at my chart, a lot of like the aspects that I have and the signs that I have in the certain planets really tells me that I'm just really intuitive, like almost has that like psychic-ish vibe. Now, I'm not going to sit there and relate myself to being a psychic and my mom sometimes has refrained from that because people obviously like, she's had so many experiences where people look at her weird, people like get scared and then don't want to talk to her because they think that like, oh shit, she can read my mind and it's like, No one can actually read your mind, not to that level. You know, we can see things, maybe the future, just maybe something within you at the moment, but it's it's not that deep. It's not like I can know your past history and like I am seeing your imprints and like it's just is not to that level. And um, in a lot of other cases, people have this perception of what like this fairy tale psychic slash medium is and so it's like if you don't do this in a specific way that this fairy tale has been been imprinted to all of us then you must be a liar or I can't trust you or another thing is like people always want to know like time frames and time frames basically time timing in tarot and in anything is just not real because time is just flows differently when you connect to a person that has passed, for example. Like, it's just, it's not the same. Time exists here in the 3D world, our human flesh, but it really has nothing to do with anything. Um, so that's why time is, is just something that just never, like, my mom sometimes would get time frames. Um, but again, she would be like, but don't count on it. And then You know, another thing that happens is when she would give like these like, you know, readings to people, she um, would either give time frames or would tell people something. And then people don't realize that tarot, readings, astrology, like all those things, there's always a choice of free will. Okay, so like... In the astrology chart, for example, nothing is going to be 100% on point. You can, even the things that are pretty accurate, like you have the ability to change those things. You can change whatever you want. You know, you can get a reading if, or whether it's a reading, like a psychic reading or like a tarot reading, it doesn't matter. If you were to get like a reading and you're told like, I see, or it looks like your future is describing this party with like, you know, whatever. And if you go to this, there's a party that you might be going to and, you know, this tragedy thing would happen or you might meet this person or this person might, you know, from your past might be there, whatever the case is. You have that choice to be now conscious aware of maybe potentially within a week, two weeks, two months, six months, whatever the case is, all of a sudden this party comes up. And you're like, shit, 
what if this is a party and like you can decline it. So you already, if you were to happen to decline something, you already changed the trajectory to directory of your, that specific path that would have happened according to this reading. So essentially like that already is thrown out the window because you, you know, so it's just kind of things like that. In the past couple of years, I began getting curious with tarot myself. And it was something that just happened to be my own thing because I remember like my mom kind of telling me or wanting to kind of get me to want to be curious about the things that she is. And because sometimes I would tell her like, hey, I seem to be like, I've always had that strong intuition, even though I don't, I haven't actually practiced it. I just have it. For me, there's something about me looking at people whether it's in person or not, or, or yeah, in person or not. And then it's also, and it doesn't happen with every single person that I come across. I haven't pinpointed as to what actually, you know, is the cause of why some people I seem to pick up on things and some people I just genuinely, I just ju- literally don't. But there are people that, whether I see them on the internet, um, a video, or I see them in person, whether I interact with them for five minutes, for five hours, it really doesn't matter. I can pick up a sense of something about them. Like this person really struggles with like depression. Like that'll be like the basis of what I get out of somebody. Or I can tell when somebody, you know, talks to me and they're lying about something or they're exaggerating. Like it's just little things like that, that to me is it's like, it's really not that much of like a woo woo situation. It's just really being intuitive and, you know, connecting and really sometimes even like, I feel like if I were to try harder, I feel like I can maybe, um, become stronger, but it's, it's really not something that I necessarily care for. At least I didn't care for in a long time. Now I began to get curious with Cheryl myself just out of my own, like kind of coming across it myself for whatever reason and then finally I'm like ooh like I don't know like I'm starting to be curious and I remember um a couple years ago and it kind of started but it wasn't not as deep as I've gotten into it now I would say I remember like telling my mom like I kind of I'm curious about tarot and she was like oh well I I actually you know I remember I have those cards still and and so she was the one that she ended up finding them one one day and um probably like over like a year and a half ago, maybe shortly after I I mentioned it to her, she ended up finding them and she actually gave me like two, like three tarot card sets. And then she gave me like two Oracle sets. And then I've bought some of each myself. Um, I've gotten like one or two different from different sets from a friend of mine. Um, and I have done a lot of research and practice it myself. Right now, I just mainly do it for my own self. And I don't necessarily know that I'll ever be interested to necessarily read like a professional or something along the lines and like read for other people. I might, you know, get into once I feel more confident, like I might read for whoever is interested and like, hey, like, what's up? Like, let's let's do a little tarot read. But like, for the most part, I just use it for own personal purposes and just to kind of help bring clarity whenever I feel like I need it um or maybe bring when something you know when I have a question on something um or to validate something to confirm something to me you know it's different depending on what it is like I'll use it for that purpose and then I often just practice 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 so I will ask, you know, just so I can learn how to read this stuff. I've connected more to tarot than actually she has ever connected to. um, But that's just to go to show you the differences. um, Whereas I connected and I really resonate with tarot and she never really did. Um, I also began to get curious about the chakras and resonating a lot. Well, not a lot, but like a little bit with a niño financiero. And I actually do self limpias at the end of each month, or at least I try. And essentially for me, it's kind of like I use it as a a sense of clearing out like a lot of energy. So you think of like every day we 
come in contact with so many people. I mean, people that we don't even really speak to, but, you know, people, people look at us, people look, you know, they assume there's sometimes there's envy, there's, there's all sorts of energy that are around you, whether it's directed to you or not, but it's energies that we're picking up. We're picking up and then just remember, just like think of it as like a filter. You're like a filter and you have to clean out your filter. Otherwise, you know, like think of it as like a vacuum. Like if you end up having so much gunk on your on your filter, then it's not going to work properly, right? It's not going to pick up properly. So that's the kind of the way that I see it. And so I use it in that sense of like, this is why I do the limpias. So I take my water, that I, I a cup of water, glass cup of water, and I fill it about halfway with water. And I usually turn on a white clear candle and I get the tall ones that you can, I mean, now I I've honestly get them from the Dollar Tree because I have them there. And I turn it on, then I take an egg and typically it is better to use like a white egg, but I have been using a brown egg because that's what I like to eat um, is brown eggs. I'm like, I'm just going to use that. And it's perfectly fine because I almost see it as like, I mean, most of the time I buy like the brown, like cage free organic, you know, eggs. So there's still a sense of purity within that if you think about it. And so um, now you can do the the prayer, which I've never learned it. It just doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't stick with me. So I essentially just take my shoes off, but I don't wear white. I just simply take my shoes off and I close my eyes and I invite a Nino Fidencio to come and help cleanse me. And like legit, I always feel like a, a light presence, but it's not anything scary. It doesn't feel like a ghost. It just... I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but I feel a presence, like an energy presence. I take the egg and I just kind of like extend it on the palm, uh, the palms of my hand and I kind of allow him to, I imagine that I'm allowing him to kind of like take over. And so then I just start from the top of my head and I just start rubbing um, the egg all across my body from front to back as, as best as I can throughout my entire body. And essentially, as, as I'm doing this, I'm picturing that like he's doing the prayer for me. He's having he's he's following along my hand and helping to get all this energy that I've been collecting, you know, for the past month and then just having this egg absorb it so then I can um, release it into the water. And essentially, um, there's often times where usually I usually do this at night. Um, and then the next morning I will see that sometimes I have noticed that there's actual letters that have been formed, um, in the egg with the, uh, with the white part of it or the yolk even. Usually the yolk doesn't, uh, normally it just stays together. Like it doesn't, but, but sometimes it does. Um, and then I've, I've seen plenty of times I've seen initials. Or um, usually is, is initials for me. Um, and, you know, it's, it's to say that sometimes the initials can mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it's negative, um, but it can be, you know, it could be like maybe there is a person with that initial that maybe was looking at you and was thinking something positive and they just never shared it. And so sometimes that can create like an energy that just feels stagnant within the body. And so... It's, it's really nothing that, you know, you want to like overthink and, and start getting like scaring yourself away, you know, but like, it's just kind of like, okay, there was something that was laying there, maybe a person and I'm not going to start thinking like, oh my God, who is this person with the letter L or whatever, you know, it's just like, okay, there's clearly a person with a letter L maybe, or what is, or what else can you think of the letter L? Like maybe what has been really present within the, this month for me, what, what topic or theme, has there been something that has been weighing heavy on me? Like maybe it's love. And so it's kind of just having that sense of like purity, like, okay, you're, you know, it, it's, it's just helpful to me. I think when you think about like, especially with the chakra to have just to practice certain things that really resonate with you. And for me, that's, you know, the limpias. I, I realize that I resonate a lot with like the clear cognizance 
Um, so I, I don't want to get into too much detail because I don't want to make this super long and complicated. But if you ever get a chance, look up the Claire's, see if that resonates with you, the different Claire's. Um, and then the Claire Cognizance is the one that I personally feel like I resonate with the most. And essentially what that just means is that like what I was explaining to you guys is that I sometimes or often just have a sense of knowing like I just know certain things and it's not like an everyday thing that this happens or like in every situation or with every person but it's just sometimes like if I'm really it's hard to even really pinpoint like oh this comes into play with this it's it's really hard to really say but it's just kind of like an inner knowing I just know like it's not so it's not like a picture that I see you know, or it's not like a voice or some sort of thing that I hear. And this is actually one of the things that sometimes I think about, like, I feel like people sometimes have these gifts and because they have no idea what this is, uh, some people think that they're like bipolar or something. And I'm like, what if they're just genuinely gifted? Like when you think about Kanye, I'm like, is he really bipolar or does he, is he really just connected and he just has no idea? because it's not something that he's familiar with, but he has the ability, you know? And so and this, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying that that's the case, but it's just kind of like a thought that's ran across my mind. So yeah, I for me, it's just like, I'm not a fan of labels. And they seem to wait, a, they seem to like hold a, a very like heavy weight to them that I don't want to carry because I don't perfectly fit into like these labels, you know? And I also... I really don't like to be boxed in. And so that's what kind of like labels make me feel. I love labels for the simple fact that it helps bring help bring awareness to different things for us and that it helps us to find a sense of like self that like, okay, I'm not just some weird person and like I'm actually really sensitive, um, you know, or I'm an empath or I like or, you know, maybe I resonate with empath, but I'm not going to call myself that because I don't like the labels. But maybe, you know, it just helps kind of like give you a more clear sense of who you are and how you maybe function instead of just clearly seeing yourself as like some weirdo so it helps us identify things within ourselves as a human you know but that's why I like labels but I don't like them for the other aspects of them so it's just like one of those things where it's just like I'm not gonna overly analyze it I'm just gonna like say okay that some a lot of these things resonate with me and now that makes sense and that's it just leave it at that and I simply came to my own I think you know a lot of it is has influenced me like a lot of the things that I mentioned about how I grew up and the things that I saw, it doesn't mean that I'm going to sit there and do all those things that those that I saw those people doing, you know, like I'm not necessarily into like, at least not at the moment, who knows how I could change because I know myself and I can change. Like I would have never thought that I would have been into tarot and just the last couple of years I got into it, you know, and but I don't necessarily know that I like I'll get into it to the point that I'm going to be like making money off of it or sharing, you know, or making like a regular situation. It's I don't do it every single day. There's days where, you know, I kind of will do it for days on and then I'll give it a break. And then, you know, it's just whatever it kind of feels like I need. It just kind of helps see how I have formed or how I'm coming into and continuously growing into you know, the conclusions that I've come across or why I may get curious about asking certain questions because there's certain things from my past that now I can kind of like dig deeper if I wanted to, you know, or now I have this base of foundation about something and now how can that be sort of added or built upon some other belief or maybe you know, whatever else. So yeah, that is pretty much how I was raised and kind of like a a history. And now, you know, I think you guys can probably tell why this has been difficult to share on in many cases, because it's just like, I have never felt confident enough to share that because I felt like this fear of getting judged and being looked at weird because I already feel like I, I am pretty weird and different and I'm just like oh god like to think about because a lot of times if I don't have the opportunity to really explain things 
more people just like I said, people have these this filter like lens of this fairy tale about what it is to have or to think about the occult. And I'm, I don't even talk about like ghosts and anything like that because it's really not something that interests me to that level. Like I, I am interested and I'd love to do a podcast with somebody who has a lot of experience and knowledge with when, when it comes to ghosts. And I probably will just because it is interesting to me and I want to dig into that. But it's just not something that I personally have resonated with and um, have too much of that experience within like my family or just the way that I grew up. Like it was not something that was necessarily talked about or people weren't like experiencing paranormal things in my family or anything like that. Like I saw stuff on TV often. Um, My mom is the one that's more interested in that type of thing. And um, but it's not something that I can really speak on. So, you know, there's, like, I could dig into some more stuff, but this is just kind of like, um, you know, a lot of what I have experienced so far and that it's kind of like the, the major points of things in that I've experienced, you know? So anyways, um, yeah, I guess, I guess, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I, I, Hopefully I'm starting to, I think, I'm not going to lie. I have the last couple of episodes I have, I've been